you, you know, let, 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 listen to me. Either you're trolling me or I'm you not. are really just dumb. Listen very carefully. I am listening. Either, yeah. Listen carefully. Either a banana is yellow or a banana is not yellow. Okay? Sure. It's called the law of excluded middle. Now, when we talk about God, God is in a completely different category than bananas. Okay? It's because God is uh, is in the category of that which is ultimate that all facts derive. Definitionally. So Right. So okay, right. To listen, uh, listen to me. Listen to me. That listen. If you if you do not affirm the necessity of referencing God as the precondition of any fact, if you don't affirm it, then by implication, your position entails that one or more facts are viable without referencing god it could be referencing god without me knowing it you know what you know what you know what we're gonna try this uh, one more time and then i'm gonna ban on, you from the room you, for trolling now listen be, carefully listen carefully listen carefully okay because i'm not gonna put up with this brain damage stupidity if eat for any viable fact God either necessarily must be referenced or not. Yeah, correct. Good. Now, when I ask you, do you affirm the necessity of referencing God as the prerequisite for the existence and viability of a fact? And the answer is no. So, what your position entails. Okay, notice the word entails. Yeah, I understand that. Okay, your position entails that one or more facts are viable without referencing God as a necessity. Would it be a category error? That's your position, isn't it? It's not. Okay, listen, get out of my room before I ban your ass. Okay. okay? Get out. Or I'll I mean, you're, you're just unsatisfied because leave you're the room. Really leave the room, or I will ban you, and you won't be able to get back in here. Good. Okay. Comment, Tim. How, how do these guys get through university? How, how do they make it through grade school? I mean, if this is a level of logic that they have, how you know? It's no wonder, you know, now you see what you get with free education, right? Now, tell me, did I not, was I not patient with him up to a certain point, Tim? You asked him the same, you asked him the questions, you know, nine times trying to, you know, I don't understand. I don't know. Uh, I couldn't tell you. I, it's just bull crap. I mean, either if, if he doesn't understand the language, you know, go study and come back. But these are not tough questions. These are not hard. Was he being dishonest or just dumb? He was being dishonest. He's, he can't well, be... He, 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 well, an, he was an, simply an being eighth an atheist. Grader, an eighth grader is not that dumb. Okay? So he's just... He, this he's is what, stuck this on is his worldview and he will not give it up no matter how uh, insane it is. This is what the atheists do. They just babble on in their disingenuousness, hoping that, that by just just jabbering on, they will obfuscate the real issue. Okay, I pointed out to him, do, and I asked a question in a very specific way. I say, do you affirm the necessity of referencing God as the precondition for any fact? And he said, no. I said, good. Then your position is facts are viable without the necessity of referencing God as the precondition. Now, if one's position is or is stipulated to be that a, a single fact 
does not require referencing God as the precondition, then that person has denied the existence of God. Because under the definition of God being the creator, all right, then all facts would necessarily have to reference God. So if there's even a single fact that can be presented as viable and metaphysically intelligible without referencing God, then God does not exist. Okay? Because in a world where God exists, all facts would have to reference God as the precondition. Now, I dumb this down for them over and over and over again, and they continue to double talk because they don't want to see what is obvious. Either a fact necessitates referencing God or a fact does not necessitate referencing God. And if you can have a fact that exists without referencing God, then you deny the existence of God, whether you intend to or not. And I've made it clear to these numbskulls, we're not talking about God as some unembodied mind that's a superpower. We're explaining to them that God is presented and defined as the ground of all being, the ultimacy of reality from whence all facts derive. See, they just don't want to be honest that they, they are seeing facts being viable and intelligible without God. And if you can have a fact without God, then God doesn't exist from your perspective. Then they go, but I'm open to you showing me. It doesn't matter that you claim that you're open. You're still operating from the position that facts don't necessitate referencing God. If I were to say to another Christian, Tim, could you invoke the viability and metaphysical intelligibility of any singular fact that does not necessitate referencing God as the ultimate precondition? He would say, no. Utterly impossible. In Tim's worldview as a Christian, all facts, in order for them to exist derivationally, must reference the ultimate and final context, which is God. This is why Van Til referred to God as the All Conditioner in his uh, in his booklet "Why I Am a Christian," written to an unbeliever. Hey, Darth. Uh uh, I'm sorry to interrupt. Uh, Go ahead. No, I don't know how you run the server. Can I just ask a question, or is that not that's, how the rules that, that, No, no, no. That, that's fine. Oh, okay. Ahead. Thank you. Uh, like, I, I, I won't be long. I'm, I, I don't think I can... Uh, All right. Time's up. up. Okay. I'm sorry. Dude, I'm joking. Oh, okay. Uh, I, I, I just wanted to ask something about, about uh, a past debate you had. Um, it, I don't know if you recall, it was quite a while ago. It was with Mike Fowl, F-A-H-L. Yeah, Mike, Mike Fowl, he's, he's borderline insane. I, that's, I, I don't know of any other interaction you've had with him except that you one who, debate. Do you, that know, I, do, you, do, you, do you know who he is? No, no, I, I don't. I really, I, I don't oh, know okay. who he is. All right, I know, I know who he is. He's, he's not, he's, um, I want to be careful what I say here, but he's, the guy's not playing with a full deck, okay? Okay. In my final response to Michael Fowl, what you heard was sarcasm. The concession in the end? Yes. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, never, that never was mind. Pure, that, 
That was pure sarcasm. Did you ever formulate a, uh, or did you ever debate him after that where you actually addressed what he says? Just wondering. No, I'm, uh, I mean, no, I don't know. I, I literally do don't. I, I don't recall that we had any other dialogue or interactions after that. I've encountered him, but I haven't had dialogue. Okay, I'm going to try to be nice. I believe that he displays what I consider to be schizophrenic type of symptoms. Okay. Wait, you mean in that debate or just him in general? In, ge in general. Oh, okay. But what about that debate? Like that's no, what I'm was, just Listen, about. I was just, I was, I was in a good mood on that day and I was humoring him. Yeah, it looked when, like you were in, in the best mood, honestly. Like, of all the moods yeah, I've I seen was, you, you were, there, I, I you were was, the best I was, I was, I was humoring him and not trying to be mean, but he's a schizo, okay? So you just let him, just, you, you gave him affirmative on every statement he made just to get him off your back, I suppose? I wasn't taking him seriously, okay? And yeah, even yeah, yeah. atheists okay, who know okay. him, that he's, that he's not playing with a full deck. Well, yeah, just watch I, any. I, if I you can, if, have you have you have you watched any other videos of him? I, I can't find any videos of him. That's the okay, thing. I, right, I would right, like okay, to. Yeah. If perhaps you have yeah, any reference. He, okay, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you right now. It is my sure, sure. my opinion. My opinion that he's in another world. Okay, and I'm not saying that to be mean. I'm not saying that to throw him under the bus. And I know that somebody uploaded the video. What you heard there in the conclusion was pure sarcasm. That's fine. No, no, no. Okay, I understand yeah, the context yeah. now. And I, I, I was just wondering if you ever had a follow-up where you actually then addressed what you perceived to be his lunacy. No, no. no there's, there's, there's no point in addressing because he, he makes no sense at all. Wait, he makes no sense at all? I, I, I find it odd that you yeah. would allow him to ramble on for an hour and then you say, okay, yes, yes. You know, that really? Yeah. Do you understand that I was I was in a good mood on that day? And yeah, I yeah, was, I understand. I, was, I understand. I was humoring him. I wasn't taking him seriously at all. Okay. No, no, no. That's, I, I completely accept that that is the case. I'm not uh, negating that at all. I'm, I, I was just wondering if you ever actually uh, decided to address it because I didn't know that you thought he was insane. I, I had no idea. Well, I use that, I use that loosely. I'm not, I, no, I'm not, I, I'm not, not I'm in any capacity. My vulgarity is, is, just, is, yeah, I just, I just think that he's, um, as far as I'm concerned, he, he verbally displays schizophrenic type of reasoning. But, but, and but I don't one, mean that for somebody who disagrees with me. No, no, I, I understand. But, but the, 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 the weird parts in the debate were where, where, like you said, you uh, uh, give him the benefit of the doubt because he is also a Christian in that sense. Like uh, Michael Fowl? Like, uh, yeah, you were showing him. Well, not Christian, but, but he was like, a, he wasn't an atheist. Dude, and, dude, 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 listen to me. Sure, sure. I, th I think we're spending far too much time on my interaction with him. I already explained okay, to you. Okay, then I apologize. I apologize for no, the, no, the Don't conference. apologize. I'm just trying to say that what you heard at the last end was just like, okay, Michael, whatever, you're right. Yeah, you no, know, that's, just, that's, just, you know, that's absolutely that's, fine. I, I completely understand now. But, the, like, I don't even care about that part. I, I, I was just wondering if you thought anything that he said was serious at all, or was it just the ramblings of a schizophrenic? Um, he, he very rarely can put two ideas together. Oh, no, no, I, I understand. I was just saying, do you consider anything he said in that debate? If the conversation have, like, was so I'm long ago, I don't remember the specifics. Okay, all, okay, all yeah, I know okay, is, no problem, no problem, no problem. All I know is somebody uploaded the video and remarked that I conceded that I was wrong, and to refresh my memory, I skimmed through the video and went to, went to the end, and then I'm like, it just makes me laugh. People are uploading a video where what you heard at the end was sarcasm. 
I mean, can I can I give you my take as a as a completely oblivious what person to the whole true? ordeal? It's it, I don't even care about the end. The end doesn't even concern me at all. Uh, yeah, to the, yeah, to when, the when you point. say when you say you were being nice and charitable and in a good mood, uh, like that was really nice to see you in that form. Like that that because was because I rarely I rarely would interact with him because he's nuts. Oh, you knew he was nuts even before then. Yes. Oh, what okay, okay. This? What debate was this? The guy with his name is Michael Fowl. Oh, the guy who uh, who uh, likes contradictions. Who says contradictions can exist? Yeah, he's okay. he's he yeah he's he's nuts. Okay. No, oh, okay, okay. Th I, I'm sorry if I uh, intruded on anything. I don't, I don't mean, I don't mean, I don't mean nuts in the usual sense where I think his reasoning is incoherent. It's just nothing he says is is normal. He's not a normal person. Yeah, I mean, in, I that, in that debate, he actually said that he uh, accepts that God exists, but sometimes he has to reject God. Yeah, yeah, he does say weird things. Yeah, I, I, he, said I, that he said most atheists will deny that they know that God exists, and I mean they they will resist Darth on that. Um, he said, and in that debate, he said, "I'm not one of them. I I accept that God exists, and I just deny him." Oh, okay, okay. He said that in the debate. Go back and watch it. I, I, that's just weird. I don't know why anybody would say I believe something is and then I deny it. How can you deny your own belief? Okay, it doesn't listen, make sense. Okay, listen, also in that do you understand? Do you understand? Do you understand that there is a spectrum of people that have abnormal thinking? Okay, there are yeah, these course. clear demarcations. Now, on the on the one extreme, we have people who are in mental institutions who are classified as schizophrenic. But in, uh, you know, from what I do know of studying it in the past, there's there's a whole range of mental derangement out there in society where some people are not a danger to themselves or others, but they're crazy. And sometimes people are crazy. Sometimes they're, 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 they're or let me put it this way. Sometimes people are expressing that they're out of touch with reality and other times they're talking about things where they seem to be in touch with reality. There's a whole spectrum of this. Okay. Now, if that's the only occasion that you've heard him, you probably, you might not pick up on his lunacy, which even the regular atheists who know Michael, they, they, they know that he's not playing with a full deck. Right. I completely so. accept that. There's nothing that you said right now that I would find weird or unacceptable. You're right. I, 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 that's the only time I ever heard him. I can't even find any information on him. I don't even know who he is. It's just that's I the only waste, thing I, I wouldn't waste your time. He's just okay, then, then I wouldn't waste my time either. I, but there's nothing that you're saying that, that, that sounds weird or anything like that. Uh, there were to be parts of the yeah, there were parts in the debate he was just saying like weird things. I understand, but I don't know. Like it's just one hour debate. You can't say, "Oh, this guy is a crazy lunatic," uh, you know. Like, uh, but you know, some uh, people, uh, some I, people, I you know, things saying. they say, you're going to raise question mark. Like, what? But if you're familiar with somebody, you know that these are these kinds of statements are exemplar exemplars of their underlying, uh, you know, uh, cuckooness. Okay. Well, That's my whole foul for you. Well, per perhaps that just goes to show we're not all equipped with the powers of observation uh, for someone such as yourself or others. I, I, I just didn't get that big of a hint of that. I, I don't know if he was actually insane or not insane or not, not literally insane, but the the the, the spectrum you you uh, ascribe to him. But at any I rate, actually, uh, yeah. I wouldn't even really call that a debate because it seemed like either Darth had been sedated, someone snuck. Yeah, him, that, that was weird. That's that's, that's what that's what we, Darth said. Sorry. He was in a good mood, so I, I I didn't know what the hell that was. I mean, it was so long ago. I was, so I, thought I, was, was I was I was conversing with Michael. Um, I believe it was late at night. I was conversing with him, and I was simply humoring him. Rather than than just simply telling him what I you know thought of him, they don't. It's not something. It wasn't a serious. You know, it'd be funny is if the 
the screen flicks over to Darth and you see him just like browsing YouTube videos, not even listening to to Michael or uh, what's, the, uh, what's the guy's name? Mark. Uh, Mike name Fowl. Mike, Mike. Michael Fowl. He's just browsing YouTube videos and napping. His mic is, t- is talking. One, one thing I will say, though, that, that, that was a side that was actually pretty refreshing to see from the uh, postings of, of people that they have on you, which kind of paint you in a, in a, in a slightly more aggressive, not just aggressive, but like a, a disrespectful, like, like a, you're eating up too much of the talking time. I know why you do it sometimes because people just aren't answering. I get more, I get more like, aggressive. I get more aggressive and insult when people are showing a pattern of behavior where they're yeah, deliberately like they're being deceitful and de- yes, deceitful yes, and disingenuous. And I don't take kindly to that. And I call people out on it. Of course, of course. No, no, I absolutely know. But but is everybody being deceitful? Like, because not, I don't uh, mean everybody. Would you say more than 90% of people are deceitful? Overwhelming that majority, you? The overwhelming majority of atheists that I encounter, to varying degrees or another, are dialoguing and engaging with me in a disingenuous manner. It even includes PhD atheist Alex Malpass. Yeah, I, I, I've seen so. Uh, okay, and if you the saw the last yeah. encounter I had with him, where I got uh, aggressive with him, is because of his disingenuousness and trying just simply to change the subject onto philosophical minutia rather than addressing the issue. Okay. No, and, 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 as I would as well. Like that—that that makes complete sense. I, I, I was just wondering: is there any, like, literally any atheist by name you can think of off the top of your head where you would consider to have had somewhat of a productive debate or a debate where, uh, you know, cutting people off or them cutting I you off wasn't a common occurrence? I, I have had only a, a less than a handful of atheists where I, I, I didn't show some level of ir- irritation when they were truthfully answer the questions. Because if they truthfully answer my questions, that's going to plunge them into an abyss of incoherency. This is what this is the, 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 the questions sure, are sure. Specific, the, the questions are specifically designed to expose the incoherency behind whatever the atheists say. And they don't want to come to grips that without the God of the Bible as the all conditioner, that they're doomed to incoherency. Okay. Oh, no, I, I was just wondering who, who those people actually are so I can see what honest uh, debate between them may look like. Because L- like, the, 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 the debates that you have seen online are only a small, tiny fraction of all the, of my encounters that I have had over, over the, over the years. A lot of times the recordings that are uploaded are the ones where sparks are flying or I get angry. Most of the recordings have been uploaded by people who don't like me and want to present. Yeah. Yeah. They want clickbait. They want to paint you in a bad light. Bad light. That's right. Most of the recordings are posted by people who are my enemies. No, but that that's what I'm wondering. Do you have like like you don't even need debate footage. I'm not asking for that. I'm just saying do you do you have anyone by name that I could look out for perhaps in the future that gets uploaded as an honest person you would think? Not not uh, that I can as not, an that I, not that I can remember. Oh, it was so it was like so I long ago you well, ran across if, somebody. If, if you if you have an there was I think there was only at least one atheist that I can recall in, in the last six years who simply admitted by answering my questions they're like yeah you're right without the god of the bible i have no coherence for anything only one atheist because because you have to understand that they are committed to their autonomous reasoning they do not want to give it up and when you give up autonomous reasoning the flip side of that is you are submitting to the mind of God and his autonomy. To not accept the autonomous nature of God's mind is to cling to your own autonomy of reason. And so my questions are designed to show the bankruptcy of what I call the 
autonomous reasoning or atheistic reasoning to show that it is incoherent. But they want to continue to believe that they can have intelligibility and coherence when they say they lack belief in God. And the answer is they cannot. What, what, what about uh, when you try to divine the truthfulness of their claims? Like their honesty is what I'm saying. You said well, I already know. To... I already know, not because I'm a mind reader, but because God has already diagnosed their hearts. I already know that anything except where they tell me they submit to the mind of God and the mind of Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, anything short of that is rebellion and an example of uh, autonomous reasoning. Also, anybody that even claims they're atheists, they're liars? Um, the Bible says, let God be found true and all men to be found liars. Uh, when in, in the Christian worldview, truth is that which conforms to the mind of God and how he has revealed it. If anybody utters any idea or concept that it does not cohere and conform to the mind of God, then we know that it, it is simply not true. Okay? Now, some people make statements because they, 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 they're so deluded in their thinking, they don't even realize that, that they're deluded. But when, when, like, sometimes people just outright lie about stuff. Yes, yes, but I'm just wondering how how do you divine that? How do you know that 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 is what, certainly the case? That's why I'm because asking if all atheists are lying. Somebody alive. tells me when somebody tells me um, that no, my position is not that I don't want there to be a God. I know that that's not true because the Bible teaches me that autonomous reasoning only is the consequence of rebellion. Autonomous reasoning is where the mind of man will make a determination as to what the nature of reality is, so by you can have a canvas or a framework upon which to place facts. Yes, yes. I, I'm just asking, does that then mean all atheists are liars? As, yes. as so long as they yes. are atheists. They are, they are liars with respect to certain issues. They, if if which you ask one, them what their if you ask them what their favorite color is, they might tell you the truth. Wait, why would they be telling you the truth about that? I. Well, they what, could, what issues are they are they certainly liars about? That's that's what I'm like wondering. That they that that they don't know that God exists. Oh, so they do know. They they're do just know. Lying, uh, they're um, lying and they're lying, lying to themselves. No, no, but so they're not they're not convinced of what they're saying, right? No, no. The the issue is they know that there is a creator God because the creator God has revealed himself and he has revealed that he has made himself known to everybody who has a normal brain. But people who what say, no, like I do not know that. Okay, do you, are, are you familiar with the concept of psychological self-deception? Uh, yeah, I am. Good. That's that's what they're doing. They're deceiving themselves. Like on purpose is what I'm wondering. Yes. Is that on yes. purpose? Yes. Also, they, they came to the pre-conclusion of what they want to be, and now they've formulated they, a, a right, way would you, to would get you them like, into would you like me to show? Would you like me to show you a scenario why that's true? I'll no, say no, to I'm somebody, asking, is I'm that, trying to answer you, sir. Okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead. They will tell me, I'll say, why are you an atheist? And they well, because there's no evidence for God. And I said, is that belief sincerely held? They say, absolutely. I say, good. I say, can you please tell me then, since th th that there are no facts that stand in causal relations with God as the origin point, I said, could you tell me what is the origin point of all things that begin? And then there's dead silence. This happens yeah, 99 yeah, I, this happens 99.9% .9 of the time. Occasionally, someone will say the Big Bang, and I'll say, well, did the Big Bang begin? And they go, yeah. I said, well, that doesn't address the question. What I want to know is, what is the origin point of all things that begin to exist? Since, since 
since there are no facts that stand in causal relations with God, because you've stated there is no evidence for God and evidence entails a causal relation, right? I said, yes, yes. can you tell me, then can you tell me what is the origin point of all things that begin? And 98 to 99% of the time, the answer I get is, I don't know. And then when what, they say, that the lie? when I say, would you please, I'm not done yet. Okay, sorry about that. And Go then ahead. when I say, then when I say, since you don't know what the causal origin is of all things that begin, then how did you exclude God? And then they will say to me, well, because there's no evidence for God, which is a dog chasing its tail. Sure, sure, sure. Okay, and, I, and when I explain to them that all they're simply doing is, is they're simply restating their starting point in different words. When you exclude God, you say, well, because there's no evidence. Well, how did you make a determination that all facts do not necessitate referencing God as the starting point? How did you make that determination? And the question is, how did they and how could they? How could they make a determination that facts don't necessitate God as a reference point? Or, excuse me, starting point. How could they make that determination? The answer is they did so arbitrarily because they want to be Lord. They Wait, do they not want, want to, to be to Lord? To Lord. Like they want to be God? They want to be God. Oh, okay. Okay. If yes, God is you. God, if God is God, then it is encompassed upon us to surrender to his status. But they do not want to submit to God. Do you have a Bible? Yeah, I've read it, but I don't okay. have it. Read Romans, read Romans 1, starting at around verse 16 or 18. Okay, Romans, says, uh, where? R Romans chapter one, at around okay. the eighteen verse mark. Okay, where it okay, says it that which that which can be ev known about God is evident to them ever since the beginning of the creation of the world. God's eternal powers and attributes have been clearly seen through what has been made, so that men are without excuse. And then it says. And they and and be, they turned and worshipped the creation, okay, rather than the Creator who is blessed forever. They worshipped the Creator. In other words, there's a conscious, deliberate choice to say the reason why anything at all exists. Uh, it, let me put it this way: they reject. They make a deliberate rejection of the concept that the reason why anything at all exists is that there is something absolute, ultimate, and personal, and hence God. They do not want that to be true, which is a choice. And then they reason to themselves that that is not their starting point, that they don't want there to be a God, but 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 that, that there's no reason to believe in God, right? Which means... Yeah, yeah. That they've that that when they say there's not a reason, that means they've adjudicated that facts do not require referencing God. But how did they determine that? The answer is they didn't determine that at all. They simply adopted it arbitrarily to assuage their conscience because they don't want there to be a God. Because if there's a God, then they are obligated to submit. Yeah, of course. Now, in the book of Thess Second Thessalonians, okay, it says that in the last days, God will send a damning delusion. In other words, not that he himself deceives, but providentially, he permits a coalescing, a coalescing of circumstances, whereupon Satan will um, um, inspire the Antichrist to deceive the world. And it said... Because they received not a love of the truth, that they bought into the damning delusion. The receiving not a love of the truth is the precursor to the damning delusion. Okay, the same yeah, thing yeah. is true here. When somebody when somebody says to me, "Oh, well, 
you know, I don't believe in God as a conclusion because none of that, none, none of it's, ev- nothing's evidence for God. But the point is simply this is, that's not their conclusion. That's their starting point. Their starting point is no God. And if they right. deny that, I'll say, good, explain to me how it is that facts don't necessitate Referencing God, because when you say there's no evidence for God, it means that we can have facts that have a context, but that context does not necessitate, and the key word is necessitate, God. Yeah, an ultimate how, being. Yeah. How, yeah. How, did, I, I how, did, how did how did you determine that God is not necessitated? This I understand. Is I, understand. Uh, I, 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 do, I was do, just going to say, uh, this is why... Most intelligent atheists will try to uh, squirm over into uh, agnosticism because they. Oh, that's. Oh, that's I was going to ask, I was gonna ask right. what of like people who think they're agnostic, or what of people like indigenous tribes that have never met, you know, um, how can I say, uh, uh, civilized world, so okay. they don't know what the Bible yeah. or any right. of these uh, holy texts are. Like, what of those people? I just just wonder. Okay, the Amazonian spear chucker who wakes up tomorrow morning, when he w- when he wakes up, right, is he going to be surprised that the jungle is still there? I would assume no, he's not. not. No, because he has a, a conceptualization that there is something that is static that provides for yeah. continuity and change. Now, the Bible makes it very clear that God's spirit convicts all men of their sin, and we can only be convicted of sin if there's a lawgiver. If there's no ultimate creator and lawgiver, then we have no sin. But the Bible says the Holy Spirit convicts all men that they're sin. That means all men are convicted by God in their thought life, that there is an ultimate creator and lawgiver. Okay? Now, God, in Romans 1, it says God makes it very clear that people can know that God exists because of everything else. Everything that exists is a signpost that indicates God. Why? is because the denial thereof is incoherent. Because if somebody says, no, 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 all of these facts do not indicate an eternal God, then they indicate that the ultimacy of reality is non-personal. Then how are they personal? You see, the non-acceptance that the ground of all being God is personal and rational, and we're a byproduct of him, is to conclude that I'm a personal, rational being that is spit out or exuded by the non-rational or the non-personal. Like okay. softness? Let me, I, let me read Romans uh, 1.19. Okay, you got to speak louder, Tim, because you're weak. All right, is that any better? Yeah, it's better. Okay, all right. This is Romans 1, verse 19 and 20, as he was telling you earlier. He says, since what is may be known about God is plain to them because God has made made it plain to them. For since the creation of the world, the invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen to be understood from what he has made, he has invisible qualities have been clearly seen. So they see it with their understanding. Yeah, you're roboting, Tim. So, and then you see the. There will be without excuse. That God wants- yeah, so whether the person is an atheist. Uh, or some polytheist in the Amazonian jungle, uh, unless you believe in an eternal, absolute, personal God, then you're an atheist, even if you believe in animism or junior gods, because ultimately those junior gods are going to be exuded or emanated from the non-personal, right? So 
the point the point is this is everybody knows God exists. Um, Even and, insane course, we're, people. We're not uh, talking. We're not. We're not. We're not talking about people who even there are even insane people who know God exists. But we're, what we're talking about is not people who are brain damaged. Okay. People no, no. Who I'm, brain I'm just malheur. asking uh, as a side. I'm, I'm not trying well, to make a point. Is, insanity wondering. is generally a, a biological a marker uh, that it, it, that there's something wrong with the brain. Yes, the of course. Point, the point. The point. The point is this: is I ask very precision questions to get to a point where the person's own position ends in catastrophic futility that it is it is not just simply futile it is impossible to deny god now if something is impossible to deny then we have to affirm it well of course right and so the existence of god cannot it is impossible for the existence of god to be denied and if somebody says well i deny god exists see there you go it's a good what we're talking about is not that you verbalizing it the question is in order for you to say that x uh, does not exist you have to demonstrate not x all right okay the position is not lack of belief the atheist position literally entails the denial of God, either directly or indirectly, either explicitly or implicitly. It makes no difference whether the denial is implicit or explicit. It entails the same position. And so if somebody position entails the denial of God, then the question is, how do you rationally defend the not God ultimacy? Yeah, yeah, that's why yeah, you will hear sense. me say to unbelievers all the time, "What is the ultimacy of reality?" And they almost always end up saying, "Well, I don't know." I say then, if you don't know, then you cannot negate God as the ultimacy, and you can't hide behind. Well, I don't, don't deny it; I just don't accept it. No, because the non-acceptance means that you're operating that facts are viable without referencing to God as the ultimacy. Now, this is a very disturbing analysis for these people because they believe that in their unbelief, in their denial, they've, they've psychologically deceived themselves that their denial is actually just simply neutrality. Well, you can't be neutral. You cannot be neutral toward God. And the people, the reason why they don't want to acknowledge that that which is ultimate is God is because then they are. It is incumbent that they are obligated to submit. Now, do you know that the overwhelming majority of atheists that I have debated over the years, almost all of them, do not have a problem acknowledging that something is absolute and is eternal, but they do have a problem with acknowledging that it's personal. Because if the absolute is personal, oops, uh oh. I mean, it must be personal because it makes the personal possible in the first place well that's the point that van till makes that the atheist has the rational irrational dilemma the atheist proclaims directly or indirectly that they are a personal rational being and that when they deny that the ultimacy of reality is itself a rational and personal then they are claiming that that the personal and the rational is exuded from the non-rational and the non-personal. Well, how, explain how kittens give birth to frogs. How how did how does something exude something that it that it that it is not? I mean, you can look at you know, so it could be made out of the same stuff, but not be arranged in the same way, not have the same property. That's not the issue. It would still be the same stuff. Hey, 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 Darth. Uh, do you think I can ask just a few little quick sides? You can. Sure. They're very I quick. I don't, I don't know how much time I have left, but go ahead. That's fine. Yeah, you can leave at any time. Please don't don't feel compelled to remain on the line. And I thank you for for your uh, um, uh, kind effort. Um, I was just wondering because you said you know, the the spear chuckers in the Amazon and things like that, like it's irrelevant. They have like a constant uh, understanding. That, uh, no, there is a constant that provides change and uh, 
you know, uh, how can I say it? Like a like an ultimate being. It, it's well, just they, a, they, well, they they wake up every morning and they yeah, yeah, are yeah. not surprised at the continuity that they are seeing again along that other things change. Yeah, well, yeah. What, they, are, what you, they will either conclude, listen, the spear chucker is either going to conclude that the continuity that they see and experience is, is actual caused, or, right. it's, it, it, or yeah. it's illusory, so that there has to be something that is securing the continuity al along with providing for change. Okay, yeah, and yeah, so yeah. Whatever, whatever they think of is as being static and ultimate that provides for continuity that's that's the ultimacy of their reality and what and it, it, even little children have to ask yourselves well is that which is ultimate does it have a mind like i do or does it not have a mind even little children think this but way what happens before they come to that question though like what what do you what, in what category do you pick those kind of no, people they, or they, those kind they of children? know they, they know even 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 children at a certain point have before a, a that recognition point, though, is that what they, i'm saying they, no that's that's not an issue because the Bible makes it clear that God has made Himself evident to all men. How that when that also kicks children in don't, don't fall into it. I, I was just no no asking, children wondering. children are no listen children are notoriously in psychological studies teleologic. They see design and purpose behind things. Yeah yeah yeah. You can't you can't have design and purpose without intention and personhood. Can you have that before the development of like language, for instance? No, at a certain listen. At a certain point, it may be different for different children. At a yeah. certain point, there in neurological development, people are going to have a recognition that something is ultimate. And the next question is, well, I'm not ultimate, and I'm I'm personal. Now they're not. They may not use those words. Yeah, of course, they, of course, are there. And so the question is. Well, I'm not. I'm not ultimate. So, is what is ultimate like me, or or am I simply the the product of something that that bears no resemblance to me, meaning the non personal? Okay. Even children think this way. They wouldn't express it the way I did. Okay. But yeah, naturally, you know, they lack the capacity to do so. The point. The point is simply this. The non-acceptance that the ultimate is personal is the denial of it. Yeah, of course. Okay, of course. Now, uh, w w one final thing. This the, this will also just be as quick. Uh, th does uh, w where do you stand on on people that say, "Oh no, the the God in that I believe in the." Torah or the right. God that I believe right. well, in the same I'll be back being in five, and then I'll be back in five minutes. Oh, okay, okay. Sure. Go ahead and ask the question. Yeah, uh, the, the question was what, if things stand as they are um, in the sense that everyone actually knows that there is a God and then anybody like atheists, they're just purposefully deceiving themselves and such. There, there's some, what there's some I'm sorry, what? They're suppressing the truth. Yeah, yeah, they're suppressing the truth. Yeah, yeah. But I, I was wondering, what of the people that uh, also claim, uh, um, you know, we believe in that same being? There's no differentiation with respect to his capacity, his capability, and things like that. The people like of like that believe in like the Quran, for instance, uh, that that is a a book also. That came down from the same God. Like, what of those people? Well, oh, 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 please, 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 yeah, before you go on, yeah. just one, one, one final thing. What, what is the purpose of uh, the need? Was there a need for any of these books to even come to existence in the first place? Like, does the Bible make an accounting on why it's even necessary, considering um, everything is already as is, and most people either believe or just are deceiving themselves? Like, what's the point of any of these books then? That's a good question. Okay. The, um, the reason that we have the Bible, the reason that... Uh, see, the knowledge of God is not salvific. It condemns a person. Because the Bible says that everyone knows there's a God 
and he has written his law in their heart. Yeah, yeah. So the I was just wondering knows, what... Hold on, I'm getting there. So yeah, sorry, the sorry. knows that they are... They know there's a God, and they know their actions, not all their actions, but they know that their actions uh, are wicked. They know that they shouldn't lie, they know they shouldn't steal, they know they shouldn't kill, yet they do it anyway. The purpose of the Bible was God was, okay, the God of the universe, the, the Christian God, is a God of love and mercy, but also wrath and judgment. So there has to be, uh, from the very beginning, from Adam and Eve, God set a plan that said, don't eat of the fruit. If you eat of the fruit, there will be punishment. You will be, you know, you you on that day, you will surely die. Okay? So there was, uh, he said, you can eat of all this, you can take care of it, you can do all you want, you can have autonomy, except for one thing, don't eat of that tree. When they did that, they were, I mean, before they did that, they were lavishing in God's uh, mercy and protection and abundance and everything else. When they did, when they violated his law, they fell underneath his judgment. So he told them, you know, this is what's going to happen. So it had to happen. So on that day, they were spiritually dead and they passed the spiritual death upon to their children. So in order to so someone had to pay the price for the sin that the, that our father Adam did. The sin nature that passed on to every person. So in order for God to be loving and merciful, yet also fulfill his wrath and his justice, there had to be a way. And throughout the Old Testament and into the New Testament, it's showing that God would provide the salvation of man through sending himself, his son, God would send his son to take on the wrath from God. So that of the sins of people. Would, yeah, I know, I know. The sins of his people would be paid. And yeah, I know. Would go free. So you know this. Yeah, of course, of course. So, do you understand why? Do you understand why the book, books were written? No, no, no. I, 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 I understand. I understand why. Oh, go ahead, Ardberg. Uh, Ardberg. Ardberg. Um, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, I, that. I guess. I mean, it makes sense. I. I mean, I get the the, the story. I, I mean, it makes sense. But to me, it just raises a question. Lots of questions. But the main one, just kind of being like, so if there's a God of the universe that is able to communicate to all people that he exists and then condemns them, why why wouldn't he be able to also then use that same communicative uh, essence to, to then just let everybody know that, you know, He's got a plan, and there's here's the plan, and here's how the plan to make it right. So it just seems oh, like now we have to interface with a an ancient text. No, no, it's it's not even that. Like I don't even care about like what what his will or any of that may be. Like if if we stand affirm that every person knows that God exists, I just don't see the purpose of the text because we already know like it's fine so there's no need for the text we know how we should act accordingly i suppose but even even if we don't know how we should act and the text came down as an instruction of like the rule set yeah the position you're taking your position that you're taking is that because god did not unfail his entire detailed plan of salvation um, in text form to Adam and Eve that somehow you have a problem with it. No, well, no, no, that's that. not what I'm saying. No, no, that's not what I'm well, saying. I'm that's just to saying anybody. Why do we, oh, no, no, I'm just saying why, because we already know God exists, are the texts just simply a rule set on how we should behave? And if so, how do we differentiate the, the text, between one text the and text, the other that the means text, to be the same God? The text is to, to explain 
who God is and who we are, what our condition Wait, is. Why? We already is. know. Right. It's to, fur it's to further clarify, okay, for those who are truth seekers. It's to further reinforce the truth. Okay. The bottom then, line then, is the bottom. Listen, the bottom line is this. I'm listening. I'm listening. Either you accept what God has revealed in the Christian scriptures as a worldview or you don't. Okay. Uh, if you have a question, if it's not direct, if it's not answered in specificity or in principle, then what you should do is leave it in the hands of God. Okay. I have a small book that deals with God and foreknowledge. And the name of the book is called The Only Wise God. Okay. It's from, it's from a, a passage in scripture. I, I'm not worried about questions that I don't have answers to that reside in the mind of God that may not be given an answer either in specificity or in principle. So I'm not worried about unanswered questions. No, but that's, I'm not, I'm not saying worry about unanswered questions. I'm just saying, do you have, any stance on why something like yes. the Quran exists that people are claiming the Quran that existed that God God is allowing Satan and his minions to fulminate deception okay only to the degree that he allows them to to those who do not receive a love of the truth second Thessalonians chapter 2 Bible talks about there's a damning delusion. The damning delusion that will take place in the end times is just simply the culmination of the deception that has been going on since the beginning. Okay? What was that delusion? Is that God is not God. In other words, God, it, when Satan deceived Adam and Eve, what he was attempting to get them to accept is is that there was not a creator creation distinction but that god was just a, another creature within the same system that they were in okay yeah okay yeah right and so, so all throughout human history that false teaching has manifested itself in different costumes and masks but it's also all the same deception and you, you either have a person who has a love of the truth and they respond to the convicting power of the Holy Spirit and they come to have repentance and they come to faith in the almighty true creator or, the, or they don't. No, okay? but that's what those people also claim. They claim the same thing. The well, only you're not, you're uh, not in a position to uh, make. Particulars. You're not in any position to make any assertions. I'm not making any assertions. Unless you're doing so. Listen to me. Listen carefully. I you will. are not in a position to make any assertions about anything unless that assertion uh, is reflected by the mind of God and how he has revealed it, either in specificity or principle. Okay. And that I'm means, not, that I'm means, not denying good. That. okay, good. Well, so but, that, bottom, but yeah. that's, 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 but that in there lies my main question. If, if for instance, like the Torah is not to be heeded and the Quran is not to be heeded. What epistemic like system? No, that's not the biblical position. In the biblical I know position it's not the is, biblical position. In Second Timothy, it know? says all Scripture is profitable for training in righteousness. Okay, Re reproof and correction that a man of God may be complete or adequate or mature before God. Okay. Yeah, but I'm asking why Torah, is the Bible the determination Torah point there? By God, the Quran is not. The Quran. Wait, 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 wait. The Torah is just simply the make-believe world of Muhammad. The Torah? No, I said. Did I say the Torah? Yeah, I said the Quran. Quran. It's Quran. I mi I misspoke. The Quran. Yeah, I know. Quran I know. I can, make can believe say that the Torah is but, not. The Torah is a part of the set of the Christian scriptures. Yeah, but how would you know this? That's what I'm asking. Oh, very good because question. How do we? Yeah, how do we know? Because the Quran the, makes the same claim. Because I will, I will explain it to you. I will explain it to you. We can know that the Bible is the Word of God because when we relinquish our autonomy of reason, 
then its self-attesting nature will be evident. Well, the Quran does the if, same if thing. Did, That's what I'm trying to no, say. No, you're okay. You're not understanding. Well, first, first of all, okay. Then I apologize. What when you that affirmation you just made does not reflect the mind of God and how He was revealed it because the Quran is not the revelation of God. The yeah, Quran. But how do you in, know that? How do I know that? Be, because yes, yes. the Quran contradicts itself. Well, well, in what sense? Okay, uh, the Quran says that Allah is omniscient. Yes. Right. Now, why if, if Allah is omniscient, then why in Surah 4 and Surah 5 in the Quran, when Allah condemns the Christian teaching of the Trinity, it, it identifies the personas of the Trinity as Allah, Jesus, and Mary? Well, the Christians never identified the Trinity as being made up of Allah, Jesus, and Mary. Muhammad was some psycho on the Arabian Peninsula who uh, despised polytheism and only had a word-of-mouth familiarity with Christian doctrine. And he thought, because he heard the Christian creeds and Mary being referred to as the God-bearer or the mother of God, that Christians believed that Allah copulated with Mary, another God, and produced the that's God false. Jesus. That's not what, Christian, uh, that's not what uh, Muslims believe. That is a declaratory statement. Okay, that sir, is not the case. Listen, listen, listen to me. You, you do really not know what you're really talking. Talk. Listen to no, me. Yes, you are I do speaking. Know. I, can, I can reference it. Beginnings. Let me let me explain something to you. Sure, sure, sure. Go ahead. I didn't say I didn't say the Muslims believe that. I said this is what Muhammad mistakenly thought the Christians were teaching. Muhammad oh, okay. Quran. Well, I can well, I don't read know to what you. He thought because I can I'm not read to you. Listen to me carefully. Way he was described. I can read to you right now. I can read to you right now from the Quran, where the Quran says, "Say not three. There is not three gods. Say not three. Just yeah. Allah. I know. I know the. And I then, know the verse and in, then the Quran the goes on to say that Jesus is not a god and Mary is not a god. Okay. Yeah, he says Jesus is another prophet, just like the right. lineage. So of Muhammad, Muhammad, in his illiteracy, what? thought that the Christian doctrine of the Trinity was Allah, Jesus, and Mary. Yeah, you you raise a good point here because like all the evidence right. available to us suggests that Muhammad was not literate. He did not know how to Muhammad, write. Yeah, Muhammad, that is Muhammad, the case. That's what Muhammad. They say. The only, the only problem Muhammad, listen, is, hey dude, listen to me. Okay, I'm sorry. I, I don't claim to be sentence. an expert apologist against Islam, but I know a little bit more than you do. Now, uh, that's that's the, another the, declaratory statement. Yeah, it is a declaratory statement. You're absolutely right. Well, if I prove to you that I know more, would 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 you then concede? I said I said I know a little bit more about Islam vis-a-vis -vis the Bible and apologetics, sir. Wait, vis-a-vis -vis the Bible, okay, you know where, more about? Where, Islam? Where, listen to me. Did you did you know that the um uh who who was it in the Quran that instituted the false religion of Christianity? The, the false Quran. religion of Christianity? Yeah. Yes, yes. The, the Quran the, actually tells us, the Quran actually tells us who started the false belief in Jesus' crucifixion. Do you know Do you know that? That's interesting. No. I didn't know that. No, I don't know about that. that. I know, I know okay. they say, well, I know they ask, say the people, yeah, it, well, the, the Jews, answer the Jews is, around listen, don't time, over talk me. Say, don't over talk Okay, me. I won't, I won't, I won't. I won't. I was just trying to answer the question. The Quran says that it was made to look like Jesus died on the cross. And the the implication is this is through the providence of Allah. When Allah Wait, that's not what ordained, you just said well, because 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 it states that Allah ordains all things. It was made to look. It wasn't Tom Cruise in the Back to the Future time machine with his face mask face mask machine I understand, going but, back. But now, the fact have... of the matter is, dude, dude, you're one irritating person. Why? Just Why? Irritating. Just because I overspoke once because of that? Once. Why? I'm just trying once. to tell you I don't think doesn't so, make... sir. You have no idea how much you chronically overtalk. 
Okay, I will not talk until you're done. Is that fair okay. enough for now? The bottom line well, is this. Please, the I just bottom ask, line do not is make this. It so long the so God I can't, of the uh, Quran, address. the God of the Quran does not possess the necessary and sufficient attributes for there to be human intelligibility. Okay, one of the properties that are necessary for human intelligibility is that the creator be not only omniscient and omnipotent, but always truth revealing. The God of Islam is characterized by himself as the greatest of all deceivers. Did you know that? Am I allowed to talk? Like, I'm not trying to be did, pedantic. Did you Can know that? I did not know that because that is not the case. Okay, good. Oh, it is the case because the Quran says in many instances that Allah is the greatest of all deceivers. Yeah, I have never read a passage that says that. Good. Google it. It says you it mean? in I've numerous read the whole places. Thing. Well, let me explain something to you. There are some translations where the Ara that where they deliberately mistranslate the Arabic to say that because they want to hide the fact that Allah is the greatest of all deceivers, so they will translate it that he is the greatest of all planners. However, when you look up the Arabic word makar, right, and you look it up in Arabic lexicons, it means to plan, to scheme and plan to deceive. Okay? And it says in many places, over and over again, Allah is the greatest of all deceivers in the Quran. Okay? Now, uh, here's another problem. How do I know the Quran is false? Is because in order to have intelligibility in reality, the problem, the philosophical problem of the one and the many has to be solved. Okay. It the philosophical the problem of what? It is in the Quran. What is in the Quran? It it, it solves for that. It makes the okay, same you're an, you're, uh, you're, affirmation. You're an, you're you're an, you're an idiot. Okay. What is the one and the many problem? It can't be one and many. What is the one and the many problem? That it cannot be one and many. Sir, that what cannot be one in many? What is what is the one and the many problem? God cannot be one in many. Really? How no. do you know that? That's what the Quran says. No, you're not. You're you you do not know what I'm talking about. Oh, okay, the one then, in the many problem. The one in no, the many problem understand. is what? What is it that is central and characteristic to the ultimacy of existence? Is it in its oneness or not its oneness? And not its one as mean many. Does the Quran does the Quran solve that problem? Yes, by saying God is No, it doesn't. No, ultimate. and I'll tell you I'll tell you why. So it describes when the, when the Muslim when the, listen, dude, you don't know what the hell you're talking about. I wish you wouldn't I mean, be I so can good. reference it. Listen to me carefully. You don't even understand what I'm talking about. That's the sad thing. I, okay. I don't think he understands what the, the, the one of the many problem is. I'm though. trying to explain it to you, but he keeps shooting – explain it to him, but he keeps shooting his mouth off. If if the, if the Allah is the ultimacy of the, rea of the reality, then the question is, what is it that exemplifies him centrally? Is it his oneness or not his oneness? What's the answer, smart guy? I don't even know what the question even is asking. Precisely, just what I told you. You don't even understand. Okay, so then now I concede yeah. and I is apologize. Allah, is Allah, in terms of his ultimacy, one or not the one? One. That's what the Quran is Excellent. claiming. Excellent. Excellent. Now we're making. So Allah, in his ultimacy, is just simply a one. Okay? Now, when he makes creation, does the creation reflect his nature? How, I, I don't know. I, I would suppose so. Oh, you don't know? Okay, well, that's the one of the many problems, sir. Uh, is, okay. Creation, okay. Is, cre is creation one or many? One. 
good. Then you can't have intelligibility because if creation is one, you can't have a, you can't invoke an array of particulars. I, I, I'm 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 ill-equipped to understand what that means. So, I, that's what yeah. I that's what I tried to tell you ten minutes ago. Okay, and I accept it now. Thank you. Yeah, the Quran, because Muhammad was illiterate, he didn't even understand the one and the many problem. He didn't understand the Christian doctrine of the Trinity. Okay, the Quran, historians, even uh, even though some historians are critics of the Bible, many historians take the Bible very seriously. They don't take the Quran seriously. Everybody knows, except for Muslims, what the Quran is. It's just the, the, the raving imaginations of some crazy guy in the Arabian Peninsula. That's all it is. Well, you're talking from a historicity standpoint. Is that what? Yeah, you sir, did you know? Did that? you know? Did you know that the Quran stipulates? It says, "O oh Mary," referring to Mary, the mother of Jesus. "O oh Mary, sister of Aaron." Do you know why that's a problem? It refers they, to Mary's. They also it refers say to, people it refers of to Israel. Mary. I'm about to kick you out of the room. It says that it refers to Mary's father as Imran. Okay? Do you know why that's a problem? It's because Miriam was the sister of Moses, and her brother was Aaron, and her father was Imran. Now, Muhammad was illiterate. He confused Mary, the mother of Jesus, with Miriam, the sister and of Moses and Aaron. Okay? So if you if you attempt to put the Quranic writings on an equal level with the Bible, you're going to fail. I'm not doing that though. Good. Then we can we can and so for the sake of conversation, we can recognize that the, the Quran cannot be recognized as self-authenticating and self-attesting. Wait, wait. Okay? Because they're not on equal footing, they cannot be self-authenticating? The Christian scriptures from Genesis to Revelation are self-attesting. Okay? I don't, I don't know. I it don't know how to I, respond. Well, th then, well, here's the point. The reason why you would not accept that is because either one, you aren't familiar with the Christian scriptures, or number two, in more likelihood, you are still holding to the autonomy of human reasoning. So I'm going to ask you. I'm going to ask you a question. I'm going to ask you a question, sure, sure. Sure. which will which will reveal it. Okay. Do you are you have you uh, have you read the Bible at all? Yeah, I've read it like I think three times okay. in my life. Do like you many do years you, ago? Do you accept that the Bible from Genesis to Revelation is the infallible, inerrant, self-attesting Word of God? Do you accept that? I don't know how what that means. Do you accept the Bible as the infallible Word of God? No, no, I don't know what that means. Like, do when you, you say accept that the Bible word, is the word? I don't know of what God. that. Means. No, no, but I don't know what that means. Then you're not familiar God. with the Bible. Wait, then do you so not know what the word infallible okay. means? Do you not know what that word means? No, no, I, 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 do, but I don't know what the word of God without means. mistake. Yeah, what it means is the Bible is the very message that God intended to get through to humanity using human instruments as his medium. Do you accept that the Bible that God used over 40 different authors to write down the exact messages using the experiences of their lives and their personas to get across an infallible message to humanity, which is the sum total of Genesis to Revelation. Do you accept that or not? I do not have enough information to tell you if I okay, do so or don't. So the, answer is, so the answer is, okay, I'll reword it. Do you no, affirm I understand the Bible? You. I understand. Don't over talk me. Sorry. Do you affirm? Do you affirm 
that the Bible is the word of God and the ultimate authority. Do I affirm? Do you affirm that? No, no, I, I don't. I, I feel ill-equipped to okay, do that. Okay, then good. Then you are operating from something else that is the ultimate decider as to what the nature of reality is. Okay. Good. And that means you. Um, I, I guess. I, I don't know. Good. So then you are operating under autonomous reasoning. Perhaps I I don't know. No, not no, not no, not perhaps, because either God is operating under autonomous reasoning, or you are operating on autonomous reasoning. Because if your reasoning is not autonomous, then by default your reasoning would be in submission to the mind of God and how He has revealed it. Oh, oh, perhaps I I just don't know. No, not perhaps, sir. There's no, no third I'm, option. I am saying Do, I don't does know. God, does God and his progressive revelation tell us what the nature of reality is, starting with himself and his plan of human history? Is that the case? Or do you decide what the nature of reality is, whereupon to place facts? Wait, progressive re, uh, progressive revelation? Okay, like sir. As in events okay. in history? Okay. What, what does what that mean? The, listen, listen to me. I'm going to ask you a very simple question. I'm what is the Garth, ultimate? I'm what is listening. the what is the ultimate nature of reality? I don't know. Okay, then you can be quiet. Okay, I will. Because let me step in here for just a second. And sure, say, go ahead. For someone, for someone who says they're not going to talk over someone anymore, you sure took a lot of talking over. If you don't know, if you don't know what the ultimate nature of reality is, then you have no framework or foundation to affirm or deny anything. Yeah, when Darth says you can be quiet, he doesn't mean it as like, uh, like I don't like you talking, so shut up. That's not what he means. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm saying, I'm saying is, uh, yeah, that. Thank you for that uh, qualification. Parakeet is right. I'm not saying don't talk. I'm saying is. Once you concede that you do not know what the framework of reality is, then your affirmations or denials about anything are meaningless. Okay, that could be the case. I just don't know anything. Then you, you, then you can't say that there's an I to be distinguished from something else there for you. And then you wouldn't even know that you know something. Well, Fair if, enough. You, if you say, I know, that means you're in possession of some cognition and reason. But I'm saying I don't know. No, but you see, that's a contradiction in terms then. Okay, then how? I, maybe I'm just not seeing it. How? If you say, I don't know anything, that's a, that's a self-contradictory statement. It's a knowledge statement. No, I'm saying I don't know anything for sure. That's a knowledge. Do you know that? By I the don't. way, you're listen, you know, you're defining listen to me. What you're saying, what you're saying is is I won't assert anything with absolute confidence. So what? So that's it. Good. Then then you don't then you shouldn't be talking. Wait, so but if I do talk, what does that mean? It means it's all sound and fury signifying nothing. You understand so you how are you able to communicate with me? You're not understanding. By the way, you're using the word knowledge in a bastardized way, meaning it's a belief that is considered to be true in varying degrees of confidence, as opposed to the standard definition of knowledge that a belief is held to be true because there is a justificatory path. Okay. Now, when I say no, when we when we generally say no, we're, we're we are referring to a justificatory path, right? If somebody says, "Oh, what time does the movie start?" The guy says, uh, eight o'clock." Do you know that? And what they're saying they're saying, "Yeah, I know," because I looked it up. They're making an appeal to a justificatory path. Now, the point is simply this. Either you have a basis to make affirmations or denials about anything, or you don't. 
But you've already answered that question. In your non-acceptance of the self-disclosure of the Christian God, you have basically denied that the Bible is the absolute authority as to the nature of reality and the plan of human history. Therefore, you're not in any position to argue about anything because in order to argue, you have to posit that certain things are true. But you don't have a framework to affirm or deny anything, do you? Do I, do I answer now or are you... Do you have do you have an ultimate framework about what reality is? In, oh no, no, I don't. Out of, don't. Out of which that you would be able to affirm and deny things? Perhaps not. I don't think. I'm not sure. Okay, th 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 then then as Parakeet said, you can be quiet because then anything that comes out of your mouth will be arbitrary. Okay, that's that's fine. If that's the case, then let let that be so. But should I then just perpetually stay silent I, I what course of action do i take uh, the then? course of action is for you to become a christian submit to the lordship of jesus christ in all things the bible says that we just don't submit to christ's lordship in terms of him being savior but that he is lord of all Okay, that all knowledge depends upon Jesus Christ. All all truth statements depend upon Jesus Christ because he is the creator and sustainer of this world. That's the course of action that you need to take because once you have Jesus Christ representing the Godhead as the foundation of, of reality, you now have a framework from which you can make affirmations and denial. But if you don't accept the Christian worldview, which is the denial of the Christian worldview, then whatever affirmations and denials that you give, I want to know what the ultimate framework that these come from. But you've already answered that question. You don't know what it is. Yes. So your affirmations and denials are blowing smoke. Okay. But you... So the course of action would, would then be to, you know, go Christian and accept is, is to, Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Is, I understand. Is, is to accept the Lordship of Christ, not just in terms of salvation. That's the first step. But you see, Christ is yeah, Lord of all. Okay, so if I say that I do that and I just declare it as such, but... I still remain similar in feeling. How, what? Like I don't understand how that would be. Yeah, a saying it won't get you that. anywhere. God, yeah, God's that's not what I'm saying. By people verbalizing it. Yeah. So how you do I do come, that? You have to come to the complete realization, without Jesus Christ, the second person of the Godhead, without Jesus Christ. Okay, you are doomed in every area of existence not just in terms of your eternal destiny, but you are doomed in terms of your ability to reason or possess knowledge about anything. And if somebody says, well, I'm not doomed, say, yes, you are. Because if you deny Jesus Christ, if you don't bring every thought in second in, in second th excuse me, second Corinthians chapter 10, it says we bring every thought into the captivity of Christ. Okay. Right? Every thought is in subjecting to Jesus Christ as Lord of all, right? Without that, there's no foundation for anything. But, okay, I, I accept that. I understand what you're saying. There's no qualms about that. I'm just saying if I were to proceed to do as such but not feel that which I say, how am I... How is that the correct course of action? Like, like I understand if I did. God, God commands. God commands you and everyone else on this planet, planet, to repent. Which means you need to have a radical change of mind that you are utterly and completely bankrupt in reality before God. Okay, and that I means that. when you're and when you're and when your heart stops, you're going to be spend an eternity separated from God. And you're not just going to be bankrupt in terms of a future eternal life. You're going to be bankrupt morally, politically, ethically, in every area of life, okay? With, without God, then you can't make sense of anything in life. Politics don't make sense. Ethics won't make sense. Biology won't make sense. 
because what's going to happen is they're just going to try to appeal to something else that is static and ultimate rather than Christ, rather than God Almighty. And then when they try to appeal to something static, say, where'd, you, where'd that come from? By the way, what do you mean by separate from God? What's that? What do you mean by separate from God? I understand you mean hell, but like, what does that those entail? Those who do not repent throughout the course of history and recognize their utter spiritual destitution and our sinful status before Almighty God, that there is no self-effort, no course of action, um, uh, consistency of behavior that's going to motivate God to keep us out of hell. The only thing God recognizes is that he commands all men everywhere to repent and to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of, of, of sins. No, okay? I, I understand that. Yeah. I understand the conditions that must be met in order to not end up in a separation from God. What I want you to explain more, because I'm kind of confused about that, is what is this separation from God? Explain more about how what? is it even possible? Well, how how is it even possible? Because our our own existence, you know, Hello? by itself. Can you not yeah. hear him, Darth? Am I still heard? No. Uh, I can speak. Well, I mean, I can hear you, but I don't think you can hear. Mic check. Yeah, no, I'm here. Parakeet, can you hear me? Yeah, I can. I, think I hear you, Darth. I hear you, Parakeet, and I hear uh, Udros U Uri Das. I'm here. Uh, maybe, maybe you know, Darth. You yeah, Darth is gonna have to reconnect. Okay. I messaged him. There he goes. Really? I don't know if I'm muted. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I hear you. No, I was asking. Right, I was I'm, asking. I'm about now. Darth. What do you want to know? Um. Well, you you spoke about the the conditions that must be met in order to not end up in that separation from God, and I understand that. Uh, my question would be, how is this, I mean, in what sense would it be a separation? Because I, 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 I would assume that you believe our very existence is dependent on the existence of God, right? Yeah, we will be, we will, in other words, we will not, we will not enjoy the presence of God and his blessings in the future. We will be sent into outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. But would it be a complete separation or only when it comes to the blessing and the presence of God? They're going to be separation means we will be exuded from the type of a blessing and peace and happiness that God uh, planned from the beginning. You will be under his wrath. Does separation does not mean annihilation. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that's what I was trying to understand because but you, you won't, you won't be, uh, you won't be separated from yeah, God. People will be sent place. into the lake of fire you where they will be, be eternally separated for eternity from God. They will get what they wanted and what they deserved. Do you think people want to go to hell? Yes. Really? I mean, they really? reject God. They don't want to be around him. They don't like uh, him. They, 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 they want to go to hell in the sense that they refuse to take God seriously when he convicts all men throughout human history. See, people have a different amount of, not like, for example, Myself or other Christians in the room, we have far more theological knowledge than some of the great uh, believers in the Old Testament. We've been blessed with far more theological insight um, and wisdom from God than some of the great Old Testament saints because they hadn't received it yet progressively. But regardless of one's time in human history, right, everybody has the light of God. Okay, and God's spirit convicts all men of their sin and all men know of their guilt and their temporal separation from God and that we're alienated from God and that there is a need to be right with God before we die. This is known throughout all ages, but because men want to commit themselves to their own autonomous reasoning, they disregard the convicting power of the Holy Spirit, and then they manufacture the world that they think and want to believe they live in. Um, to answer your question in a different way about People are people not wanting to be with God. I'll give you a, a quote from a, a honest, an honest quote from a famous atheist, Matt Dillahunty. He said, "Even if Jesus existed, uh, I wouldn't believe him." Or he said, "He wouldn't be worthy of belief, and I wouldn't believe in him, even if he I existed." Mean, if he of existed. belief or of worship? Uh, well, well, he said worship, I, I think. But yeah, because there's a big distinction between the two here. 
Uh, like, right, you can Aaron, believe in someone's I, existence I, I, without I, worshiping them. Which, which, what Matt Dillablovator didn't recognize is he uttered a complete incoherent statement. Yeah, you made that point before. I understand what you mean by that. Uh, yeah. I, I, but back to the whole separation from God thing, I think the term separation from God is kind of confusing because according to the Christian position, even our, our existence requires God. So we would be in some framework that would be dependent of God in no, some separation, way. Separation. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. We already explained You're that. separated from right, God right now. We, we explained that. Why are you going back over it? And You're separated right. from God right now. You're not in a right standing with God. Well, obviously, wait. it exists in a framework that – God is ruling over. Yes, yeah, separation. Right? Separation has different uh, nuances to it. Right. It, 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 it means that we are we are alienated from God, and we are not correctly related to God. The moment Adam and Eve um, ate of the tree of the knowledge of evil, uh, knowledge of good and evil, they became separated from God. Their, their feet may have been on the same coordinates on the planet, but they were now separated from God. But in the final judgment, it says God is going to take all of those people who are unrepentant throughout human history, and they are going to be cast, they are going to be placed into whatever constitutes the lake of fire, which itself collectively is, is uh, characterized as being separated from God. They will be. Oh. When we say lake of fire, I don't, I don't, but maybe I don't think Darth believes this, but we don't conceptualize it as an actual lake. That's no, like I understand that, but whatever it is, well, obviously. Okay, it's, would it would it be easier if we said said you will be separated from the love of God? Would that be right? Easier? So yeah, so not a separation entirely, just from its his blessings and his right. love. You, and his you will you will not be under the love of God. You will be under the wrath of God. It's either one or the other. Like, there's no middle ground. Nope. For me, it's not even about believing in it. It's just the concept of money. That's money? usually what I understood. Well, religion takes in money, doesn't it? How you going <laughs> off topic here? Yeah, it sounds a bit it's off just, topic. It's just how I view it. It's not necessarily dunking on. It's just... Hey, you know, hot chocolate, are you, a, are you an atheist? I'm not going to answer that question because I don't want to debate you. Do you. You don't want to incriminate yourself? I don't want to debate you. Okay. Well, then then why are you making assertions? I'm not making assertions. Yes, yeah. you did. You made a comment uh, about a religion and money. I'm making an assertion. <laughs> Even the atheists are like, yeah, you made an assertion. Did you, did you make an assertion about religion I mean, religion just because I'm an atheist money? doesn't mean I can't be intellectually yeah, honest. I an assertion, but yeah, I'm one at a time, hot chocolate. Simple. Hot chocolate, are you making an assertion? No, I'm stating my view. Okay, hot chocolate. If you're going to be that stupid, we'll put duct tape on your mouth, okay? That's okay, an assertion. That's Stating your view is I, making I don't an want to debate you, Darth. Okay. Hey, Darth, are, are you done with me? Because I don't want to take up any more of your time. Hello? Give me a second. Give, give me a second. He's furiously typing right now. I would have questions about how the Quran. No, I just had to put a piece of duct tape on hot chocolate's mouth because he's stuck on stupid. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Darth. Uh, another question. Now that we're moving on, uh, does repentance necessitate like sacramentation? Wait, are we moving on? Does, yes, we are. Okay. Uh, does, thanks, does Darth. Uh, like, thank okay. you for your time and whatnot. Does so, repentance uh, what, David? I'll see you yeah. around. Uh, yeah. Does uh, repentance necessitate sacramentation? Is it necessary that we like uh, perform some sacrament in order to get repentance from God? Um, when you no. say sacramentation, do you mean that the sacraments are in some sense meritorious, a meritorious means in order to receive yeah. grace? Uh, yeah, like I essentially in the no, the, the answer is the answer is no. Right. Uh, for example, baptism is mandated, but it doesn't it doesn't bring grace. It's just an outward symbol. That's the, right. Rest. So ultimately, yeah, the, all listen to me. All of the grace of God that is necessary for the establishment of the forgiveness of sins is granted. When one is genuinely repentant and places their faith in Christ as Lord and Savior, 
not a result of sacerdotalism or ritualism or faithfulness. Because there is nobody after they become a Christian who will be completely faithful. And even if you were completely faithful, then, then that would be setting up a system of faith plus works or meritorious action. This is where all the sacerdotal churches are teaching a false gospel. And the reason why they're teaching a false gospel is because they are doing so from the, as a product of autonomous reasoning. Because if they weren't operating under autonomous reasoning, they would be submitting their beliefs about salvation to the mind of God and how he has revealed it in the Christian scriptures, which God's mind says, for by grace you are saved through faith it is a gift of God, not a result of works or performance, lest any man boast. Okay? Yeah, it seems to make so you're more or less um, anti-Catholic, anti, you know, any kind of sect of I am I am anti any group that claims exclusively to be the only one and true representative of Jesus Christ and who claims that in addition to repentance and faith, that one must perform to a certain degree of faithfulness by either sacerdotalism or ceremonial practices in order to ultimately and finally receive the grace that results in eternal life. That makes sense. That is a false gospel. Makes sense to me. All right. Thanks for the insight. Yeah. And the people who are mired in such false deceptions are the most difficult people to uh, get through. Okay. When I became a Christian in my very late teens, I was raised in a sacerdotal church. I had no axe to grind against it. I never read one piece of literature that was anti the Catholic Church. All I did was I read my Bible, read the New Testament, and it was crystal clear that the message of the free grace gift of God in Jesus Christ through repentance and faith was not what the Catholic Church was teaching. Right. Jesus never talked about baptism and you know, all, all this stuff being required for yeah. salvation. Ba ba baptism is commanded, but it is not a requirement for the remission of sins. It is simply commanded as an outward expression uh, in public of the inward transformation that has taken place. That's why Peter said, uh, repent and be baptized for the remission of your sins. It was simply an outward testimony of your inward transformation. It was not meritorious. And for those who make it meritorious, they're committing the same sin of the sin of the Judaizers that Paul addressed in Galatians 1, where they simply said, oh, you got to, if, if you have true faith, you got to be circumcised too. Otherwise, you don't have forgiveness of sins. And Paul said that that was a, a, a damnable demonic gospel. Darth, wasn't there a part in the Bible where someone specifically asked Jesus what is required to be saved, and he answered that clearly? Yeah, yeah that was a rich young ruler who was trusting not only in his wealth, but in his own personal righteousness. Right. right. And what Jesus was trying to get him to do was to recognize his own unrighteousness. The path to salvation is by recognizing that you're doomed first. I think he told him to keep to the commandments and also to give to the poor. Do you know, do you know why he did that? Yeah, because having all this money while leaving others in no, suffering was why did he, what did, what, Okay, many times Jesus doesn't give a, a direct answer to people who are disin, who are disingenuous. He wasn't sincere when he came. He simply turned to me and says, really, what must I do to inherit eternal? He says, what does the law say? He goes, oh, I've kept all of these laws since my youth. That was a lie. Jesus knew it and he knew it. And Jesus was simply exposing his false belief. And he says, oh, okay, you've kept that? He goes, wait, how did he do that? Let's sell everything you have and come and follow me. Wait, and, Darth, and this wait, was wait, not wait, a universe. Wait, listen, listen, this is what he also got to. He understood before this man walked up, because he was, he was God, right? He understood that this young man's God was his money. He didn't challenge him on the law. He said, oh, great. Well, if you've done all those, sell everything you've got and give it to the poor. 
And the man walked away sad because he knew his God was money. Right. See, Jesus said at one time, he said, it's easier for a camel to go through an eye of a needle than for a rich man to inherit uh, the kingdom of heaven. Now, the idea of richness is not just simply possessions. Right, it's not. There are people. Nothing. There These are, are people who people think are that they are. Have, they are. There are people who think that they are not destitute before God. Okay. Um, when, when people have a lot of wealth, they um, it's your attitude toward the possessions that 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 you have. Imagine Bill Gates goes to the doctor and the doctor says to him, "Listen, we just did a scan on your body. You have stage five cancer. You have one week to live." Do you think his attitude toward the stuff that he has is going to change? Uh, being perhaps, rich yeah. is being rich is not just simply a merely a focus on lots of possessions that you have a lot more than other people do. I agree with that. Being being rich means that you as you stand before God as creator that you are not destitute. Anybody who when they think of themselves and their status before God, okay? Anybody on this planet if we do not come to the conclusion that we are utterly destitute, completely and destitute before God, okay, then that person is a rich man. That's why Jesus said it's easier for an am a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man, okay? It's because, because somebody who has lots of possessions but recognizes their utter spiritual bankruptcy, they recognize that they're not really rich. They're just simply a temporary store of stuff. Okay? Yeah, I, I get that. It's not just that. Look, also, if you possess... When we look at... When we, people when are not we, having we have it. to compare scripture with scripture. Being the rich, the issue of the rich, it wasn't just or merely the focus on lots of possessions. It was the person's attitude about their status before God. Maybe they're asking, they're looking to have more too, or to at least keep it. Because either either way, way, the point, the point, the point is this: is Paul says in the scriptures, is a, is if that we have food and clothing, that's enough to be content. Okay. The point, the point is sim simply this: is there are people who think that they're rich because of their possessions. There are other people who might have more uh, possessions, but they in no way consider themselves rich. They just, what, why do you think it is? Let's take a look at a lot of famous people who become rich and successful and money, and they become alcoholics and drug addicts because they can be, become completely disillusioned. What they used to consider riches, they consider of non-importance. Because they realize it's just, it's stuff stuff can't make you happy. It's also not just that; it's also that the brain kind of get used to the point. The, the point. Is, the point is this: is is when Jesus talks about the rich and the poor, it's it's the rich and the poor from God's perspective. Are we bankrupt and destitute before God? Because if we do, then we're gonna then we're going to uh, want to beg God for mercy. And yeah, just, right. And, Obviously, and, and no matter how, much, right. no matter how how many billions of dollars you have, that's not going to make a difference in the afterlife, is it? Right. I mean, I mean, it's, people could judge you on it in the sense that if you had all this money, that means you had the power to potentially help people, and you didn't do it, right? Like the fact that you have well, resources. It's not. It's not well, the is issue. Primal. Listen, just don't be fooled. That it's just not simply Jesus saying. Oh, somebody who has millions or billions of the dollars can't get in heaven. That's not the issue. The issue is somebody who sees that as an asset standing before God, as opposed to somebody who might have ten dollars, a thousand dollars, a million dollars, or a billion dollars in the bank, and they recognize that before God, that's nothing. That's meaningless before God. Right. I mean, it makes sense. You see, so you have to understand that in those days, people who were wealthy would say, well, this is a blessing from God. Therefore, this is a sign of God's approval. 
Right. Some yeah. Would watch up. They would say, oh, well, you know what? I must be in good standing with God. Or when it comes to how many animals you possess or how many children you have. That's also- why somebody who was truly biblical, who had lots of possessions, right, who said, yeah, I have lots of stuff, but before God, it's meaningless because he owns everything. I'm actually, even though from man's point of view, I have lots of stuff, all of that stuff that I have stewardship over is nothing because God owns it all and I'm bankrupt before God. Okay? How do you think that's it relates to the book Jesus of God? Was getting at, that's what Jesus was getting at about about a rich man entering into heaven because somebody who is truly bankrupt and poor in spirit before God will recognize that whether they have one penny, one dollar, or a billion dollars in the bank, that they are still destitute before God. They are utterly poor and bankrupt before God. It's like this. It's like when you're playing World of Warcraft and you think you got a lot of gold in the bank. Yeah, yeah I get you. But in reality, yeah. Blizzard owns it all. Right. Yeah, I, I get that. But I, I would wonder how you would relate that to the book of Job, uh, Darth. <laughs> The book of Job. Job. Right. Job. Job. Oh, sorry. That's okay. Yeah, because basically he had a lot of possessions. He had many children. He had, you know, lots of servants, lots right. of animals. And and he had, like, catastrophe after catastrophe going on, you know, having happening to him. And other people looked at him and thought, well, you must have sinned or you must have done something wrong because otherwise God would have not done that to you. Like, Look, here, here, let me tell you a, a story, okay? There's two guys on the Titanic, and they're they're on the bridge, not on the bridge, and they're on the deck, and one of the guys is crying, and the other guy comes in and goes, why are you crying? And he, he said, haven't you heard? He goes, what? He goes, the Titanic just hit an iceberg. And the other guy says, so what? It's not your boat. <laughs> What do you care? It's not your boat. Imagine, imagine somebody who has a, imagine somebody, and I'm sure that there are instances of this who are millionaires or billionaires, and you have a dying child that you love. And you say, I know your child's dying, but you're rich. They're going to want to smack you in the face because at that moment, their realization of their child's condition, that their child is dying Okay, they're going to count all the stuff that they have or stewardship over is nothing. Yeah, because it doesn't solve the problem. Child. That's the point of when Jesus says a, it's easier for a camel to go through an eye of a needle than for a rich man. In other words, we always have to evaluate who we are, where we are, what we are in light of our relationship with God. And then the Quran because if we if 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 we don't if we don't do that, then any analysis of our status or possessions will always be a miscalculation, and we will conclude that we're rich when we're destitute. Okay, and so this is why they were shocked. They say, "Well, then, then how could how can they?" They said, "If that be the case, how can anyone be saved?" And Jesus says. All possibility resides in God. In other words, we have to recognize our destitution in every area of existence and that we depend upon God for the meaningfulness of everything. This is why I use the line of apologetics that I do with these unbelievers, because the moment that they do not affirm that the richness of knowledge and wisdom all reside in God through Jesus Christ, then I know already that they are completely bankrupt and destitute in terms of intelligibility and meaning, and then I just simply expose it. I lay open to them. They've got nothing. I have a question, though. Sure. Don't you think wisdom can also help someone be a better person? Wisdom is seeing life from God's point of view. Hmm. Oh, yeah. If you define it this way, and then, yeah, never mind. Yes. Then. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. When yeah, it comes to rich. What I'm trying to show them, what I'm trying to show unbelievers is while they 
will not affirm that God is the ground of all being, that they claim that they can get along with God. I want to show them that they are utterly destitute in terms of anything. The moment you do not affirm the God of the Bible as he has revealed himself throughout the course of history, that's when everything collapses. In other words, you will not even be able to uh, talk about politics or ethics. See, they think they can, but they can't. Why do you think it is that the overwhelming majority of atheists and agnostics that I interact with, that they quickly become argumentative and deceitful and disingenuous? Because there's nowhere for them to turn. So you see, you listen, so there's, a, there's an atheist out there named T. Jump. And he says, there's no reason to believe in God because you see, uh, I can equally explain anything from a materialistic standpoint. Uh, and when I debated him, I quickly showed him the bankruptcy of such an uh, utter bankruptcy of such a statement. And I said, oh, you don't have a good reason to believe in God? I said, so you're presupposing that the preconditions of reason exist. And he goes, yes. I said, good. Can you tell me? I said, what, what, is, what, what is it that's ultimate? You know what this clown's answer was? This this arrogant, haughty guy body. who Not thinks he's a philosophical genius. He says, he says, he says, what is ultimate is reality. I said, but wait a minute. Is reality the set of all entities? He said, yes. I said, but some of those things are not eternal. I said, can you tell me what is the property and attributes of that which is ultimate? You know what this clown said? He goes, existence. All he was simply spewing was nonsense. He was bankrupt when it came to explaining anything in existence. Yet he wants to maintain that he doesn't have a good reason to believe in God, but that he has a good reason to explain how his world provides for reason. But when I question him about it, all he could sit there and go is existence. I mean, it was laughable. Yeah, it's kind of circular. It's like an infinite regress issue, isn't it? The reason why they don't take what I'm saying seriously or any other biblical apologist is because they refuse to be introspective and to realize that their position of autonomous reasoning doesn't go anywhere. It's, 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 it's vacuous. There's, there's nothing. It's vaporware. They'll say, well, I have a brain. Well, wait a minute. What exists that secures brainness that you want to tell me about? If it's, if it's not God, what, what provides for the intelligibility and actuality of brainness? Is it a world of chance or an, a world that's not chance? Oh, well, it's a world of not chance. Oh, okay, good. Tell me, tell me, what is it that secures brainness? Is it causality and laws of nature? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Where, where, where are these laws? What, what, what is securing laws of nature? Are the laws of nature static and ultimate and absolute and of themselves? I honestly don't know. Well, neither do they. And so what they want to just say is just... You can, you can include me in that since, you know, I'm not convinced of the existence of the God. So you can, you can, you can include me. Well, in that the, the, point, the point is when you, when you say, I'm not convinced, such a statement presupposes the falsity of God. But if you presuppose the falsity of God, then your position entails the falsity of God. But the falsity of God is cannot be sustained. It it cannot be defended. I mean, it's it, a bankrupt it is a bankrupt position because how do you establish the falsity of God? By what means? Well I didn't establish a falsity of No, God. your position, your there listen, you and other unbelievers fool yourselves that you maintain a kind of a position of neutrality toward God. I'm unconvinced, but you're not neutral. Your position is that the intelligibility and viability of some facts need not necessitate referencing God. Okay. Do you, do you think it would so be irrational question? for me to think it, it, it's entirely possible that all my 
ideas and facts and beliefs are dependent on a God? Like, just, you think I'm... Now, your position, if you do not affirm that the God of the Bible is the necessary prerequisite for the existence of facts, then you deny it. So that means it I doesn't believe- matter that you don't. Right. So Listen, can I try to reformulate all that? All I to have to do, sense? all I have, all I have to do is say to you: Do you affirm the necessity of God as the precondition for all facts? Do you affirm it? And if I reply, and if you say no, yes, if I reply if no, you say no. Then if you say no, then what you're claiming is is that one or more facts exist without reference to God. And if you state that a if you state that a fact, one fact at all, exists without reference to God, that denies God. That then that is a denial of the existence yeah, of God. Yeah, I understand that, but it's more than the said question is. That. Then the question is: is how do you possess the capacity at all to affirm or deny anything without God being the precondition? Because so, if you so deny, yeah, so if you're asking me to present an alternative God, model, right? Then you are affirming the falsity of God. So how does your world, your God-free world, how does it provide for reason and affirmation and denial about anything? And if I can't provide, you see, anything, when Jesus shocked the daylights out of the apostles and those around him, he said in response to them, and I'll paraphrase. All possibility, okay? So if somebody says God is not necessary, okay? Then what you're saying is is that affirmations and denials, possibilities and impossibilities, will be in virtue of something else. So what is it? And if somebody says, well, I don't, then if somebody says, well, I don't know, then when they invoke affirmations and denials, they're blowing smoke. You, you made those points previously, but it's more on the step before though. I'm kind of still confused. Um, so basically, if, if some random person says, I don't believe God is required to hold a belief, right? Okay, so they're not convinced that God is necessary for them to be able to hold any fact in their minds or any belief, right? That's the question. Yeah, then they are holding, then they are holding that there is another framework for the existence and intelligibility of facts. That they're convinced is the correct one? No. If you don't affirm that God is the necessary precondition and prerequisite for facts, then by default, they are holding to something else is the precondition of facts. So to claim you don't act, accept explanation A means you must accept some other explanation as true, essentially. When it when there there's there's no alternative when you're dealing with the ground of all being. I mean I guess that would depend how you would define a god because No, sir, know, listen carefully. The law of excluded middle states something is either A or it's not A. Either the precondition and prerequisite of all facts is God, 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 or it's not God. Yeah, I understand that. So if somebody does not affirm that God is the precondition of all facts, then by default, they are implicitly asserting that not God is the precondition of all facts. Can I... Try to turn that around to, to see what. Do what you, you accept are. my last statement? Um, I would. I, I would like to ask your question to have to have a better. Do you accept my last statement? I can't tell you if I accept it or not yet because I want. If to somebody it. does not affirm that God is the necessary precondition of all facts, you're saying that this implies and by that default that's an, an implication they will be affirming that not God is the precondition of any facts they invoke. Do you think it would be a false equivalence if I bring up some kind of guilty, not guilty, you know, example? 
No, that's a category error because that's a though, though, that would be a high, that would be a dependency state. It's not dealing with the ground of all being. Can I ask you just a simple question? Listen just to me. Listen to me. If somebody says, "I do not affirm that God that is God. the condition of all facts," right. then what they are saying is the fact that they exist and that they can reason and affirm things is in virtue of something else. Because you see, there's no middle ground for uh, facts. A fact either derives from God or it does not. And if you don't affirm that it comes from God, then by default, you are holding that it's from not God. And if somebody tries to wiggle out and saying, "Oh, I'm not saying that at all. I'm I'm just saying I don't know," then then what you're, you're they're still telling me that there that God is not necessitated to be referenced in order to invoke one fact. Simple as that. Fact a fact can be uh, invoked and can be metaphysically viable without necessitating referencing God. And if one fact can be presented as viable and intelligible without reference to God, that is the denial of God. The reason why people do not want to accept this analysis is because they know that they cannot argue for the falsity of God. I, I, necessary for us to hold facts. Does that imply this person accepts that God's okay? Um, let me read this again. If someone is unconvinced that some source, yeah, if you're unconvinced, then you deny it. No, 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 no. You, you read no. You read that wrong. Uh, it, if somebody it, is unconvinced that some source other than God is necessary, well, that other source other than God, if they're unconvinced then that means that they're operating from that God is the necessary uh, precondition. Okay, okay, so that's that's consistent at least. Okay. Yes. Okay, so yeah, I, w- I wanted to make sure of that. You see, people, it's one thing people want to get through their minds is unbelievers desperately want to maintain verbally and to themselves that they're somehow and in some way being neutral about God. This is false. I don't think I'm neutral. I won't, I won't advertise myself as neutral. Toward Good. Then your that. position is, then your position is either your position is you affirm God exists or you deny God exists. Well, it's not necessarily in such an absolute way, but for example, I would be less convinced that the Christian God is. Listen to me. God. Listen to me. Do you affirm the necessity of referencing God for any fact? I mean, you know my answer, right? What is it? Well, it's a no. Okay. Now, that entails that not God is therefore the ground upon which you invoke facts. Why wouldn't that that simply imply that I believe it's possible for something else than God to... No, you're you're not understanding. Listen to me. Either it is the case that God is the prerequisite for all facts, or it is or not the not. case yes. that yeah. God is the prerequisite of all facts. Okay, it's, it, there's no middle ground. The it's law is the God. Okay, now if you if you say that it is not the case, then God, yeah, you are affirming God does not exist. I'm not saying it's not the case. I'm just saying I'm not convinced it is the case. You're not under, You're not understanding it. You you're you're in a desperate attempt to put yourself in a uh, uh, a neutral position here, okay? Listen I think me. one is more likely to... I didn't know. ask you, I didn't ask you what you're convinced about. I said to you, do you affirm, okay? Suppose I said to you, do you affirm that Donald Trump is the duly elected president of the United States? Responding to me to saying, well, I, I don't know what he was. I, di- I didn't ask you if you know it. I said, do you affirm it? But the, 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 the affirming affirm, something require you to listen to me, it? sir. 
No, I didn't ask you what your level of confidence is. I said, do you affirm the necessity of God as the prerequisite to any and all facts? Do you affirm that? Well, I, I wouldn't make – what do you mean by affirm then? Because to me – Do you – Are you joking? Necessary no, I'm, prerequisite I'm really not. Not to all derivational facts. Do you affirm it? Like, did I, did I say it, it is true that this is the case? Like, this is what you're saying. Like, this is affirming. Like, this is true. It's a, really. it's a simple question. You see question. why you're silent? Yes, no. It's because now you're in a no man's land, land, okay? Because if you answer truthfully, then you, you will realize you are now denying the existence of God. But you don't want to be put in a position of denying God because you know you can't do it. I mean, I don't have any grounds to deny it. Do you affirm that God is the necessary prerequisite for all facts? If by affirming something you mean I'm convinced of it, then the answer is no. Do, do you affirm the necessary prerequisite for facts? If by affirming you mean being convinced of, the answer is no. I didn't ask. No, I didn't. I didn't say convinced. Do you affirm? That God is the necessary precondition for any fact to exist. See, I'm, I'm confused because to, to me, affirming something requires being convinced. Do you affirm that Donald Trump is the president? Uh, yes, the evidence available. To do me. you affirm? Do you affirm that there is gold on Mars? Uh, there's probably some <laughs> somewhere in the crust. You know. I've, do you affirm it? Uh, I don't know if there's gold on Mars. It's, it, I didn't it's, ask you if you know it. I said, do you affirm it? So if you say, I don't know, then you're not affirming it, right? Well, I, I can't. Yeah, right. But that doesn't, that doesn't okay. mean I do believe you that affirm? Gold. Do you affirm that God is the necessary precondition for the invo fact? Do you affirm that? Isn't the Mars example a category error? Do you affirm that God is the necessary prerequisite for any fact? Uh, I can't do that, uh, honestly, I think. I don't do think you I affirm it? Yes or no? I don't think I can, so no. So the answer is no. You do not affirm that God is the necessary precondition. Now, Just like in, a world, that there's in a world where God exists then by default, God would be the necessary prerequisite for facts. That, according, yeah, if we go with your definition now, of God, then yes. If you, have, if you can have one fact that doesn't necessitate reference, manipulation denies the existence of God. What would be the fact here? Okay, okay, listen, go away, you're trolling. No, I'm not. I'm, I mean, do you think I'm trolling? Generally, I mean, Parakeet, do you think I'm trolling? He asked you a question like six times, a simple yes or no sure. question, and you just I think didn't you're answer. Dodging big time is what I think. We now just, I just pulled the duct tape out. His mouth has now been duct taped. I'm done. He's trolling. How many times did you have to repeat it? Like a simple yes or no question? I mean, yeah, they're playing, they're playing a little game because he's in a dilemma. They don't want to affirm that God is the necessary precondition, but they don't want to admit what his actual position is. Because the moment he says, no, I don't affirm it, he realizes then he will be putting himself in a position where he is denying the existence of God, which he knows he cannot defend. So what he wants to do is he wants to characterize his God, excuse me, he wants to characterize his God denial as uh, a matter of um, uh, that, that it's just a psychological state where he's unconvinced. But the fact of the matter is he's not unconvinced because he willfully is invoking facts without referencing God. He just won't come out and admit what his position is. Right? To be unconvinced is to not affirm, essentially, right? When I say affirm, 
Okay. Well, first of all, we must not make a category error because God is not like any other state of affairs because only that which is ultimate is ultimate. Okay. And so when we're dealing with what is ultimate, it is unlike dealing with any other category, a state of affairs that is non ultimate. The point is simply this is these people want to uh, conceptualize their denial of God as simply a psychological state of neutrality. And I'm trying to demonstrate through the course of questioning that by virtue of their not affirming that God is the necessary precondition of any and all facts, that it constitutes the denial. Because we're Remember, we're not talking about God as simply an unembodied mind that has superpowers, uh, who, who is more powerful than any other creature. What we're saying is God is the creator and the ground of all being and the prerequisite to all facts. Either, either you affirm it or you don't. And if you don't affirm it, then some facts don't necessitate referencing God. And if a fact does not necessitate referencing God as the precondition of that fact, then from that it follows God does not exist. But they don't want their position to entail their denying God. They want to deny God, but they want to dress up in drag, okay? It's like these these drag queens. They want to present their denial of God as just as neutrality which we cannot be neutral about whether the prerequisite of all facts is God or not God. Oh, by the way, is, is uh, the, the debate religion politics, is that your server? Yes. Are you, are you on there often or is it just, is it just here? I haven't been on, I haven't been on in a while. I, I started the server after, uh, the abuse went on in the politics server for the third or fourth time. I finally had to quit again because the mods were being abusive and Doobie wouldn't do anything about it. Well, I mean, it looks like it has about a thousand people on it. So I mean, that just speaks yep. to the value that somebody like you is going to bring to this. Yeah. And there's, there's, there's uh, lots of people in here too. And so this this room basically is a, a surrogate server of mine because I have the ability to ban and duct tape people in here. Anyway, I got to run. I'll be on later.